The multipolar neuron is really the basic functional unit of the nervous system. Now this is a long model, it's quite large, and there's a lot going on here, so let's unpack this one piece by piece. So what we have right here is the actual cell body. So the cell body, of course, would be this region right here. It's the body itself. And what you see coming off of the body are dendrites. This is a dendrite. Here's another dendrite. Here's another dendrite. These are dendrites back here. This is another dendrite here, okay? You can tell this has been cut. This has been cut. This has been cut, sliced, sliced here. So these extensions would go beyond here. Another thing you'll see on the cell body are telodendria. So these telodendria or telodendria from the term telo or telo meaning far away. Think of a telescope or a telephone, television. These are coming from somewhere else, okay? So this is gonna be coming from another neuron, another neuron, another neuron. These are all coming from somewhere else. So these that you see here in brown are not actually part of this neuron itself. This neuron, again, the same neuron that you see running all the way through here, is just this. These, again, telodendria coming from somewhere else. But what they're doing, the telodendria in the synaptic knobs, this is the knob, that sort of widened portion at the end. These are the knobs. This one's been sliced open. These are coming and communicating with this particular cell. Now, if we take this off, what we have on the inside are all of these structures. Um, if I work with some of the basic ones here and we work our way from the deepest to the most superficial regions, we've got the nucleus and then we start to see the Golgi, we see the endoplasmic reticulum, you'll see more endoplasmic reticulum here, you'll see mitochondria. These are the organelles that we have inside. Now, one thing I want to focus on, or I want you to take a closer look at, is the difference between smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. Of course, we call it rough endoplasmic reticulum because it is studded with these ribosomes. You can see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these ribosomes on this endoplasmic reticulum. This, what we're looking at here, this rough ER, is referred to as chromatophilic substance, or the common name, Nissel bodies. We give credit to the German scientist Franz Nissel for recognizing this. And this, of course, is where protein synthesis is going to take place within the cell. When signals come through, though, eventually we reach this right here. This region is called the axon hillock. The axon hillock then leads into the initial segment of the axon itself. So the axon hillock, the initial segment of the axon, and then the axon itself, you can see it's been sliced here. In fact, this whole region has been sliced open. It's been sliced here again, so you can see what's on the inside of the axon here. And that axon, again, hole again here, is going to continue all the way down and through. In fact, if I come to the end of this thing, you'll see the axon pointing out there at the end. This obviously has been cut off. So, what does this mean? When we look at this axon, this axon can exist just by itself, or in the case that we're seeing here, it is covered in what we call a myelin sheath. This is a myelinated axon. And the reason it's myelinated is because we're looking at the peripheral nervous system. So we have a Schwann cell. This is a Schwann cell right here. Here's another Schwann cell right here. And that Schwann cell is myelinating the axon. It's basically like insulation wrapping round and round and round the axon. In fact, an easy way to think of it, I always think of it, is like a paper towel roll. If you have the cardboard tube, okay, your cardboard tube is the axon. The paper wrapped around and around and around that cardboard tube, again, you can imagine that here, wrapping round and round and round and round, okay, that's all the Schwann cell. 
So that what happens here is we have this myelin sheath. Myelin sheath, myelin sheath is created by line, line, all these little thin lines here. Again, it's wrapping round and round and round and round. This is the myelin sheath of this myelinated internode. This is called an internode right here, from here to here. Here's another internode from here to here. There would be another internode from here onto the next one. And we call them internodes because what we have right here, you see how it looks like it's sort of pinched a little bit? This one's pinched a little bit again here. That's called the node of Ranvier. The node of Ranvier. We also have, because it's its own cell, it has its own nucleus. So this would be the Schwann cell nucleus. Here's another Schwann cell nucleus. Again, on the end here, you can see the Schwann cell nucleus sort of cut right there. And what we have on the very outside is referred to as the neurolemma. Lemma, the term lemma means husk. Think of the husk of a corn. This is the neurolemma. And then on the outside of that, superficial to that, we have something called the endoneurium. Endo, I know you think of as inside of, but remember, this is the endoneurium because it is inside of something much, much larger, an entire nerve.